Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Audi of Wesley Chapel, of course in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and we have, this is it, the all new Audi R8. Of course, as you can see, this is the 2020 R8 Spider. So let's talk a little bit about the Audi R8. So the first time that that R8 designation was ever used on any car, believe it or not, goes all the way back to 1998. It was their Le Mans prototype racer called the R8R. It was a topless car, so that way R stood for Roadster. In 99, they actually had two separate race cars that they were running where they used the R8 designation, the R8R Roadster and the R8C Coupe. In 2000, things changed. That's when they strictly went with a topless prototype car that would race in all sorts of endurance races, including the prestigious 24 Hours of Le Mans. And guess what? From 2000 all the way to 2005, they won every single time except 2004, if you could believe that. The car that won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2004 was a Bentley prototype, which, think about it, Bentley, Volkswagen Group, it was sort of like the same car as the R8, just in a different coupe form. The actual road-going R8 was not seen until 2003 as a concept car. If you're probably wondering, well, Joe, when did the first R8 hit the, the streets? That was all the way back in 2006. The first one was powered by a V8 engine. You could have a manual transmission. Things have changed. Now the only engine option is a V10, and the only transmission option is a seven-speed, that S-Tronic DCT gearbox. Big changes in different ways for 2020. One thing that they did is definitely the styling. So let's go ahead, dive into this 2020 R8 Spider. Right off the bat, you'll notice that there's a lot more angles to this. Audi looked at their R8 LMS GT3 race car and GT4 race car, and they took things that they learned from the racetrack and brought it in to the street car. What I love is you're still getting that very slim, very angular cut of a headlight housing, Everything, of course, is LED. Beautiful uh, daytime running lamps that when you turn on your turn signal, these light up bright orange, which gives it a nice look to it. We drop down, functional venting. I'm glad that they went with flat black. Are you ready for it? I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, are you gonna zonk this R8? It's a beautiful car. Fake vent on an Audi R8. So this is Zonk number one. Don't like that fake vent. They should have made that functional. You do get beautiful carbon fiber, which this thing has tons of carbon fiber. A Little bit of a, a lower lip ex extension here. This is gonna help give extra downforce, believe it or not, just even that little bit. This is stuff that they learn on the racetrack. But what I like is, is that the carbon fiber lip goes all the way across the front portion of this car. Now, you have your traditional Audi set up with that open grille. This is gloss black, so kind of a mixture of materials. We have the four rings. Remember, Auto Union, those four companies after uh, the World Depression formed together in Germany. My zonk is I don't like it on the hood. It's an emblem that's placed on the hood. I wish that they would have integrated it into the grille. You do have your R8 badge here, but very, very sleek, very sinister. And then they also added three more fake vents. So on the front of this Audi R8, you do have a few of these fake vents that are there for design. I'm sure in the race car version, these are functional, but on the street version, I am going to zonk each and every one of them because they should be functional on a supercar. When we get up onto the hood, love the body lines. Remember, this is a frunk because the engine is in the middle of this R8 Spider. What's interesting though is how low they got the front of this car down. But what's amazing is, and really the big question in this video, is this the most practical everyday supercar that you could drive and enjoy? We're gonna find out. As we come around the bend, you see these nice angular cuts going on. This is all new for 2020. We get to the wheels. This is just ridiculous. Beautiful machined aluminum. You got the gloss black. They're running Michelin. 4S tires, which believe it or not is surprising to me because this is kind of like a street track tire. It's not just a straight up like a, a Cup 2, a Michelin Cup 2 tire, but these are 20 inch wheels. You're looking up front, 245 on the width, 30 series on the sidewall. Look at those massive rotors. They are as big as a plate that you put a 20 pound turkey on for Thanksgiving. Cross drilled, fully ventilated, massive 
Brembo calipers. I love the Audi script and everything on there. And of course, those are gonna be two-piece aluminum rotors to help dissipate the, the heat and whatnot. But very nice setup with the Audi Sport badge. That's that whole racing branch of Audi. When we get into the fender though, this is another Zonk. I know it's got a V10. It's great to let people know it's got a V10. I don't like this emblem here. Seems out of place. I wish they would have just done some kind of like recessed uh, V10 badging or just leave it alone. I mean, we know that the car is definitely not running a three cylinder. So that is a Zonk. On the Spider, I really love the way they black out the whole windshield frame. I think it really gives it a nice, sleek, low look. Carbon fiber on the mirrors. Like I told you, they spill carbon fiber throughout this car on those side mirrors. We go down the side of the car, very distinctive body lines. That sill extension, very nicely shaped carbon fiber. And then this area has always been hit or miss for me. If you looked at those early Audi R8s from 2006, especially on the coupe, it kind of didn't blend in very well, but I really love on the Spider just the size of this side scoop, all carbon fiber, going to force feed air into that engine compartment for that naturally aspirated V10. Up onto the Speedster style tonneau cover, carbon fiber everywhere, some gloss black. Obviously that this has been designed to, to take that heat that's coming out from that V10 and just drag it out. Now here's a little fun fact for you. The Audi, the uh, R8 V10 is the same V10 that is in the Huracan. And what's also interesting, these are not made in Germany. The engine is actually built in Hungary. Just a little fun fact for you. As we come to the rear, I just love the lines, the low sleek lines. It says supercar all day, beautiful carbon fiber uh, spoiler up back, just high enough, nothing too atrocious, nothing that's going to go up and down and all around. And then when we drop down though, love the taillight housings. I've always have on the Audi R8. So you have full LED. This obviously is going to, lower portion is going to be your turn signal. Everything is open. You see this? All of this is open, not in the center area, but the rest of it is all open top, sides. And then of course, you're going to get this massive diffuser. I mean, look at the fins in this diffuser. I could just imagine the amount of pull that that's going to bring you down. Carbon fiber around those massive oval exhaust. The sound is glorious of this V10. Just wait for that. But you can even see the piping for the exhaust behind this uh, plastic grate. And then of course, you're going to get the blacked out four rings of the auto union badge. Really just looks sick and sinister in this yellow with all the black touches. But why don't we go ahead, talk about the engine and see what's going on with that. All right, guys, obviously normally on a lot of our reviews, we don't do too many mid-engine cars. We'd be open up the hood to see the engine, but this is the frunk, that front located trunk. Real simple, once you pop it, nice little lever opens up and a great amount of space in here. This is what makes this the practical everyday supercar. They even went ahead and put LED lighting and a 12 volt down in there. Very nicely done. Good amount of space for a car that can do 200 miles an hour. Now, I'm gonna swing around the back with Tom. We're gonna to go down the side of this car. I just can't stop looking at it. The lines are glorious. Probably the biggest zonk though is that on the Spider, this is as much as you could see of the engine. It's not like the coupe where you can see the whole thing, but what you're looking at, that small little area is gonna be that 5.2 liter V10, same as in the Huracan, 602 horsepower, because this is the performance edition. That's the new name that they're using. 602 horsepower, 413 pound-feet of torque. It's all mated to a seven-speed S-Tronic. That is Audi's uh, lingo for a DCT, seven-speed DCT. The Spider weighs in right around 3,700 pounds. Of course, you have that Quattro all-wheel drive system that is still rear biased. So this is going to drive a lot like a rear a rear wheel drive car. Zero to 60, 3.2 seconds, quarter mile at 11.1, and a top speed, like I said, 200 miles an hour. Now, what's interesting is that this still rides on Audi's magnetic ride si uh, suspension s setup. And another thing that's very fascinating for 2020 is that the anti-roll bars up front are now made out of carbon fiber. If you're wondering, well, what's the purpose of that? You can't see it. 4.5 pounds less weight off the front. And that's just one place. This car from front to back is lighter than the outgoing one. And remember, the outgoing one, 2018, 2019, was that last revision 
But why don't we go ahead, get to the best part, let's fire up this V10 and see what it sounds like. Alright guys, inside the Audi R8 Spider, that 2020 all new. I know you're probably saying, well Joe, this looks like a car I could drive. Hell, I'll even drive it every day because it is that practical supercar it's looking out to be. How, how much is it? MSRP with all the options, this one is sitting at $226,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Drop dead sexiness. So you have beautiful uh, yellow goldish contrast stitching. A lot of the other materials dark, but it's okay because this is a supercar. Nice leather on the armrest, on the handle to pull the door closed. You got a B&O sound system, and then there's that extra carbon fiber. Remember, this has the extra carbon fiber package, which spills it all over the car inside and outside. Very low dash, all leather. I'm gonna see if Tom could show off. There's even carbon fiber in the corner as well, which is really beautiful around the AC vents. Speaking of AC, here are your controls. This is all that the passenger gets to fiddle with. There is nothing else. There's no way that they could get to radio controls. Everything is through um, Audi's virtual cockpit, but I love three simple buttons. You got your blower speed, you got your temperature, you want it recirculating. Of course, this is gonna have heated seats, which is really nice. No ventilated seats, which is kind of crazy for $226,000. Nice sliding little cubby here. You got wireless charging, two USBs, an aux jack, and a 12 volt deep down there, and it also closes very nicely. You got some toggle switches for your traction control. I just love the simplicity of this setup. You wanna see key fob? Here's your $226,000 key fob. Audi R8, gloss black, flip it around. It's got the auto union badge there, nice brushed aluminum buttons with some more gloss black, very, very sexy key fob. That goes right there. Carbon fiber galore. This is gonna be controlling that S-Tronic seven speed DCT, dual clutch transmission. I like the brushed aluminum. Little bit of flat black, and then of course you're gonna have the controller which controls everything in front of the driver. All this is driver. Like I said, passenger, this is yours. I got the rest of this. Carbon fiber, electric e-brake, this is your button for the top to go up and down. I'll show you that in a second. Of course, you're gonna have this little tiny, you want cup holders? There's your cup holder. So this is really a zonk for me because if you wanna have drinks, this has gotta be open. And the funny thing is it does not like lock in very well. So this kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a different kind of setup on this R8, but those are your cup holders. You do have a nice little storage bin in here, more connectivity, a CD player so you can rock out to uh, whatever CDs you have, maybe stir mix a lot. Close that up and then look at these seats. These are a thing of beauty. I love the stitch work, I love the leather, and you know what? They are totally supportive, but yet they hold you in place to where you could go, drive to work, put in a couple hours, and then go over to do a track day over at Sebring and the seats are gonna hold you in great. But why don't you come on over to the business end because I'm telling you, there's so much magic going on over here. Come on over. All right guys, before I let you sit where I'm sitting behind the uh, wheel of the business end, I wanna show off those nice turn singles. I really think that Audi is probably one of the best when it comes to their headlight housings, taillight housings, and all the magic that takes place inside of those really, really great color so crisp and clear but since you earned it let me go ahead and open this door up nice long open space for a supercar check out that beautiful uh, materials just like on the passenger side obviously this is going to open up your frunk and whatnot air vents so you had the two ac vents in the center but one air vent is on the door and the way that they had to do it was cold air comes out this portion and then goes into the vent when the door is shut but we have more of that carbon fiber carbon fiber down here on the lower sill with the r8 logo very nicely done seats fully adjustable great bolstering i'm six feet tall and i'm telling you they hold you in great but they're so supportive i love them
The next thing I love is this steering wheel. This is right out of an Alama prototype race car. Love the, the uh, leather, the R8 badge. Then you got your plethora of buttons. Here's your start stop button on the wheel. It's not on the center console. You do have the button right here to open and close your exhaust. It lets you know that the engine sound is on. You hit this checker flag that puts you into performance mode. And then all the different drive selections, whether it's comfort, auto, dynamic, it's all been recalibrated for 2020. Here's another nice feature that I love about the Audi setup. So you have your navigation in there. We could then go ahead, the gauges separate and you have your full navigation right there in front of you where it belongs. This is over 12 inches worth of TFT display. So crisp, so clear, so nicely set up. At the end of the day, it makes the passenger just have to sit there and just enjoy the drive, which really that's what they should be doing uh, because you are the driver and you belong behind the wheel of this car. Now you do have paddles. And one thing I'm very happy to say is they're a little bit different from the last Audi R8 Spider that we did uh, about a year and a half ago. They're not metal though. $226,000, that's a zonk. That needs to be metal. I would like them to be just a little bit larger, a little bit larger, but overall the positioning very, very nicely set up and all the controls, you're ready to rock and roll. Let's see how we put the top up. So of course I gotta close the door and then the switch is right down by the uh, cup holders, the cup holders armrest. So I'm gonna go ahead and you push down and there goes the action of your convertible, your R8 Spider. fairly quick action. Lots of pieces moving closes down it shows you on the instrumentation the car and then you're ready to rock and roll but if you're ready i'm ready let's get to the best part let's take this audi r8 spider for a spin all right guys we are rolling out of audi of wesley chapel we're in the 2020 r8 this is an amazing experience and one of the experiences along this journey that we're sharing that I love to bring to you guys. The crazy thing is, super, super smooth. Remember, we looked at those ceramic brakes up front. I'm telling you, I think back to every Thanksgiving that I've ever been to at my family's house, and really, those rotors are the size, are the size of the plate that the turkey was sitting on. That's how big and massive they are. And then on top of that, you got those massive calipers that are gonna clamp down just like it's King Kong's hand grabbing it and slowing you down. But very, very smooth. Of course, we put the top up on the Spider. I know normally uh, that would be the whole purpose of this would be to get the Spider to have the top down. But I want to make sure that you could hear uh, what's going on and, and definitely hear what I'm saying. But very, very comfortable. These seats are so supportive, but yet they're not hitting your, your crazy pressure points, which is nice. If you notice that seven speed shifts so smooth, very, very smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in automatic mode for right now, um, because from what I understand, they really work. The engineers worked on those shift points, but I tell you, looking out over that frunk, just drops right down so clear. You feel like you're almost sitting on the axles of the front wheels. That's, that's how close you are to the front with a mid-engine car. But good feedback in the steering. I have it in dynamic mode, uh, which is a notch under going the full performance. I don't think I'm gonna put in full performance and adjust all those parameters, uh, at least right now, but definitely very, very smooth. Let me go ahead and uh, get on it from a dead stop here. Drops down. <laughs> the sound of that V10, oh, my lord i think an angel just got their wings the feedback through this roundabout <laughs> on throttle wow <laughs> the brakes i'm telling you right now the way that they bite down the calipers bite down on those rotors are insane insane and it drops back down wow this thing sounds like a Formula One car. Sounds like a Formula One car, like back in the old days when they sounded really, really good. Not the newer Formula One cars, but wow. Naturally, and I didn't even really get on it yet. 
that was just insanity. All right, guys, I put it into manual mode. Remember that DCT, that S-Tronic, shifting with the paddles. We're in first gear, rolling on throttle. Very fast shifts. Wow. On those brakes, down shifting. What? <laughs> Look at this. Unbelievable, like you're on rails, coming out of the turn, on throttle. Those massive calipers downshifting. So smooth, look at this. Powering out. I'm telling you, the sensation that it gives you when you get on throttle and the eargasm that you're having. I have my towel, so we're we're good in here. I definitely wanted to bring my towel for this this uh, this drive. I knew it was gonna be pretty, pretty intense so smooth though without turbos or anything like that you just that linear power deep down grunt of that v10 and the sound is just second to none all right guys we open up the back window just to let more sound in on throttle oh my god on the brakes Woo -hoo! Woo, look at this here we go are directly in contact with those 20 inch wheels wrapped in the Michelin. Those 4S tires, remember, we're not on super sticky track rubber. We are on rubber that's gonna give us good grip, but you're also gonna get that daily durability, which is really wonderful. It's just unbelievable. Wow, even when you're just going slow, you're going fast. job with this car unbelievable and just so smooth it just purrs like we were just hauling the mail and now it's just purring like a kitty cat I mean I want to go ahead and uh, we got a little bit of open road here it's a little straight I definitely want to keep this one straight but uh, let's uh, see how we how we go from almost a dead stop here on throttle are so intentional so intentional it's like Mike Tyson punching you in the back every time you shift unreal this thing is from another planet and where they're making supercars where you could drive them every day there I go I put up the rear glass get a little quieter so I don't have to scream as loud I know I'm Italian I'm always talking so loud but uh, this thing oh my god and then you just drive you want to put it back in automatic hey we're just Going to the mall. Going to going to work. 
or going to your track day. <sighs> this is unbelievable. This is definitely an everyday supercar. Ceramic brakes, V10 power, carbon fiber spilled all over. That S-Tronic DCT, so wonderful. The sound so spot on. They got it right. They got this car right. And from what they're saying, this could be the last R8, the way that this one is, is styled, the way that this one is powered. So I'm so glad to be bringing it to you and so thankful for everybody at Audi Wesley Chapel to get us access to this 2020 R8. But hopefully you had enough. Uh, I want to keep on driving. But hopefully I gave you a nice roundabout feeling what this uh, R8's all about. Driver focus, performance, everyday wonderfulness. We're going to go ahead, wrap this one up, and get back to Audi at Wesley Chapel. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys. It's been one of those days where you just say, thank God I'm alive, and I started Radius Rides. This 2020 Audi R8 is so mind-blowing, yet with ceramic brakes, with over 600 horsepower, is it really that practical supercar? I'm definitely going to say heck yeah, but I got to give a huge thank you and a shout out to Chris, Adam, and Mike, and the rest of the crew here at Audi Wesley Chapel, allowing us access to this 2020 R8. I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question, which you should not be answering, but if you want to see more cars like these on Radies Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. But like I said, I know you do, so don't even waste your time with that. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you, this is what we bring to Radies Rides each and every day. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the family and sharing this with me. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rides merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee. I tell you, I had to put a bib on him because the drool about this Audi R8 was just intense, even for myself. I had to constantly dab, but thank you, Tom, for putting in the work, getting ready for his powerlifting competition. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.